Fuck up the airways. <laughs> we are <clears throat> talking to the mastermind behind Let's Punk or Let's Talk Punk Rock. How you doing, Jay? I'm doing all right now that we got this up. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> uh, so Jay, man, what got you into punk rock in the first place? Uh, uh, high school. I don't know. Uh, just. I don't know. It was the the music that kind of hit me hardest. Um, I had a buddy who was into it, and he's like, "Check out these bands," and then we just kind of rolled with that and never stopped. So what was the first bands you got into? Uh, let's see. So there's there's the ones that you see everywhere because they're so commercialized. You, know, you get like Sex Pistols and the Ramones on everything. But I think I think the one that he showed me first was like Generation X. Okay. Not not most people's first jump in, but um, and then we went straight from that to like the '80s hardcore. Uh, I don't know how we made that leap to you know, Black Flag and Minor Threat and all those, but that's because well, yeah. you're from America. <laughs> yeah. Right in the Midwest, I get everything just thrown at. <laughs> so where, where are you from, from missouri like right there in the center so any good bands around there uh not that i'm aware of but I'm, i've reached that age where it's like weird if i go to the house shows so i don't i don't hear about them too much <laughs> tell me about it man i play one every once in a while <laughs> So why'd you decide to do uh, your podcast? Well, it was, so it was like a podcast that I wanted to hear and I looked and I couldn't find one that was just like the straight biography. Um, and so then I thought, well, I'll just make it myself. And then it's after that, that I found out about no dogs in space. And I was like, oh, there are people doing it, but I mean, mine's just me talking to myself. So it's, it's a little different. Okay. I haven't heard the other one yet. Okay. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's so mine's usually like a half hour to an hour long talking about it, and they'll do like five parts of hour long with longer sound clips and all sorts of things. Oh. It's, it's pretty good. So you said about 20, 30 minutes each show, but how long does it take you from start to finish to do that one episode? God, so much longer <laughs> than I expected when I started. It's like, so I get, I have to get all the materials for research. So I'll I'll go all over the internet finding interviews and articles because all the zines and everything are posted now, and then I I get any book that I can find about the band and then any documentaries. I go through all of that, taking notes, and then I have to take that and write a script from that, and then I record that, and then I edit that to get all my like awkward breathing and everything out of it and the sounds of the water pipes and stuff around, and then I can post it. So like one. It, it is a little frustrating because like one half hour episode can take me, I don't know, a couple months usually. Um, but, and, and then it depends on how much information is out there. Like I did the adolescence and I expected that to be like a, a long one with a lot of information, but there's just not a whole lot out there about them. Um, there's no books specifically on them that I could find. I found like mention of them in a few uh, so a lot of that episode is just done from like interviews other people have done and that kind of research. But I think a lot of it kind of comes to they just they didn't have like 
the insane stories that some other bands do. So there's not as much to talk about. Like right now I'm researching Cockney Rejects and I've got like 16 pages of notes and I'm not, I'm not even done. I still have two more books to go through and then they've got that documentary. But, so that'll be a longer episode. So do you have certain um, places? So are you going around our town there and see any, any local bands at all? Uh, not in a while. Um, I, I've got I've got three kids and they're little ones, so it's kind of harder for me to to get out and see them. Um, seeing any any bands that are just playing. Um, so now it's for me it's more like whenever a bigger band that I've always liked happens to come through, I'll I'll make the time to go out and see that. Like Black Flag came through just a few weeks ago. And that was a surprisingly good gig. I wasn't so sure since, you know, Greg Ginn's like the only original member anymore. But And then they were incredibly nice guys, which also was surprising to me. Like after the show, they came down and shook hands with everybody and signed autographs and had conversations. And It's like Mike Valley looks like he would just destroy me, but then he's just a big teddy bear. Nice. That's awesome. Did you interview him at all? <laughs> no, no. I was. It was kind of a quick, like, uh, this is really cool seeing your show. All right, I gotta go. Um, because there are a lot of other people. I don't want to be that asshole. It's like, hold on, hold on, everyone. Let me get my my time here. So I just mm -hmm. kind of took a quick picture and shook his hand. Nice. Um, hey, so uh, the U the YouTube channel. When'd you start that? Really? I don't remember. Um. I mean, probably around, uh, you know, 22 or something, right? Uh, that might have been when I started putting it out. I know I started research. So during lockdown, I, my wife got me a book on podcasting and she got me a microphone. And so then from there, I spent, a, I, spent I don't know how many months because I wanted it to be good. So I don't know how many months I spent just planning it out. Um, I put a lot of thought into like which bands to cover in that first season and then getting the, the materials to all the research material and everything, and then figuring out how to record and all that. Um, so I think I started getting at it around, around 2020. Yeah. yeah that's why I asked. Cause I see you got a lot of, a, a lot of what? Well, yeah. I see okay. you got a lot of, uh, of, of good uh, bands here that are fucking, uh, they're, they're amazing, man. So have you ever seen any of these bands here? Um, maybe. I, I don't even, it's been like, I've been on like a year long hiatus while I'm trying to get the second season going. I kind of forgot what all I've done. Uh, yeah, so your, first, your first one was in uh, 22 and that was uh, Kids on Glue. <laughs> and uh, the Red Bastards. Oh, that, yeah. No, I haven't seen them. Uh, so that started <clears throat> every once in a while, I'll get an email from a band who obviously hasn't listened to my show because <laughs> I just do like, I just do like the biography, but I'll get a band that'll be like, Hey, we want to do an interview. And I'm like, I, I don't do interviews. Um, so then I'll, I'll pass them on to other people that do interviews, but they, so the red bastards were the first one to reach out to me and it kind of gave me an idea where I was like, all right, well, while I'm on a hiatus trying to get other episodes set up, so there's not like, big gaps between episodes uh i do these like bonus episodes and throw them out there where we'll just play like a song of either either unsigned bands or bands that aren't on like a huge label um but yeah red bastards they were the first ones to reach out to me but they're in wales and i don't think they have any plans of coming here so i haven't seen them <laughs> that's cool though yeah like the the latest one of the latest bands I put out there was uh, Tigers of Wrath and they're they're in Spain so I don't know what they're saying but I like their music. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really good. Yeah, I listen to everything. I mean, I I mean I don't I don't hear anything I don't like. Yeah, I got to be careful like when I'm driving around listening to their music because like like I said I don't know what they're saying, so I don't know who does <laughs> and they might. <laughs> <laughs> who knows Kill everybody. yeah it's something horrible 
Yeah, sorry. Hey, man, that's the way punk rock should be. You know, you got to offend somebody. At least one person's <laughs> got to be offended. <laughs> so with your episodes, have right. you ever had a band reach out to you after you did a episode about them? No. Uh, that would be pretty cool. But I'm also like, there's a part of me that's terrified of that where they'll they'll just be like, no, this is, you got everything wrong. Right. <laughs> Like, I don't know. The only one, like, if no effects reached out, I'd be like, well, I got it from your book. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote it, man. Um, but no, I haven't, I haven't heard from any of them. That'd be cool, but kind of, that's, that's a worry I have. And and I put that in every episode, like at the end, where I'm like, if I got it wrong, let me know. Yeah. And so far I've only had one guy reach out and it wasn't any of the information I got wrong, but I, I mispronounced some English cities. Oh. And I was like, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's Chiswick, not Chiswick. Oh, it's... I don't speak English. I speak American. There's a W in it. Oh. Um, He's probably the only one that noticed. Yeah. <laughs> I caught one when I was listening to my own when I I did the Damned, and I was talking about uh, Captain Sensible when he did uh, was a Happy Talk. And I in it, I was listening to myself on it, and I, I said "Happy Feet." I was like, <laughs> well, I'm surprised nobody's called me out on that one. So I I made a quick note on on the episode notes on that one. That's like, pretty I, funny. I could see him dancing, dressed like a penguin at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He was like an odd dude. So you're on season <laughs> two now. Yeah, I've got uh, an episode maybe. Yeah, I've got three episodes finished, like completely recorded and edited. And I'm working on, like I said, Cockney Rejects. And then I don't know if I'll do one more before I start putting them back out because it's like the hiatus has gone longer than I intended it to mm-hmm. because I didn't I, uh, I didn't pl- think that a couple of the ones I did I was going to find as much information. So it made the research just go that much longer. Um, like I did Blondie. And there's way more, and I, I know they've been around forever, but there's just so much more information than I had expected to find. So that one's a pretty long episode. But then, so like I don't remember how many months that took me. But then, like when I did Lagwagon, that was I had that one done in a month because there's just not as much about them. So, is there any bands that you want to do, but you're just like, wow, that's gonna be way too much to, to tell. yeah. I, like you get those those really big ones that everybody knows, the really popular, so like like the Ramones, but there's just I mean how many books and documentaries and everything is there, and, and the same with like the Clash and just in any of those. So it's not an issue of like I don't think I should. It's just I don't think I have enough time to research that much because they've just and also like who wants to hear it because they've been documented so well that like. It's it's all gonna be already out there. Yeah, right. And that was kind of my extra help. Yeah, that was kind of my goal when I started it too. I was like, I want because when I was looking for the pod a podcast like it, I was like, I want one that's either gonna give me new information about bands I already like, or is gonna introduce me to bands that I haven't given the time yet. And I kind of do that with with myself when I pick the bands to research. I'll pick some that I'm really into, and some that I've just heard mentioned a lot. Um. Like Cockney Rejects, I never listened to them before researching them, but so that was why I picked that one because they're mentioned in everybody else's books. It's just because I think they were around a lot. Um, well, a lot for the brief period that they were really hitting it. You know, that's kind of like when I was growing up. That's how we would find bands. We'd look at the back of the records. Mm-hmm. If you see somebody being thanked so many times, like, oh, I guess I gotta check these guys out. Yeah. Well, that's something else that got me. Like, so when I was in high school and like SLC Punk was out and I went and bought the soundtrack for that movie and then I did the I flipped it over and then I started buying all the albums from the bands that were on that soundtrack. So that's how I, I discovered some other bands. Um, like, I don't think I'd listened to Fear before that. Um, but that's, yeah, that and then just passing CDs around all your friends yeah i mean now it's easy with the internet you can find everything 
Oh yeah, you can just Google like what band sounds like this, or give, give me a list of punk bands. Although that's kind of fun to to look up because you'll see a lot. Where you're like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna gatekeep, but I don't know if I would put that band in there. I'm trying to think of one that would pop up that really doesn't fit. But Devo. And that's that's one where I'm I'm on the fence. I want to do a Devo episode one day. Um, They're great, you know. To yeah. me, oh, that's all punk rock. That's what that's what they called it back in the day. They were fucking in yeah. the beginning. You know what I mean? Well, talking heads and all that shit. I, and I think that's funny when people like throw a fit about certain bands. They're like, well, that doesn't sound like punk, but they'll be like really into the Ramones. And I'm like, like if you really if you approach the Ramones as a band you've never heard, you wouldn't. You probably wouldn't call them a punk band. Cause they, like they don't sound anything like what it's like today. It's just they're mm-hmm. they're fast and they're good. I like them, but you know, singing songs about you know walking around with with your girl and it just, it doesn't fit with like what people talk about today. Right. I mean, there's punk rock you don't have to like. You know, that's what I say. I don't like the Offspring, but I'm not going to say they're not punk. You know, fuck it. Right. Yeah. I don't. Do you like any other music besides punk? Yeah, I'm. I like grunge a lot. Um, I listen to a little bit of everything, but I'd, I'd say like the the genres that I listen to the very most are, would be punk and, and grunge. Um, I went down a pretty big grunge rabbit hole for a while while I was in college. Right. I mean, we don't, we don't, you know, in our podcast, we don't really play just punk. You know, it's just yeah. not the same shit over and over. You know. We, we let it loose, you know, play some joke shit too, man. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, you got any funny stories or anything? Maybe you introduced yourself to the, to the wrong guy and, and wished you didn't fucking, uh, do uh the research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, so, so I like to, I, well, I'm trying to think of which story to tell. <laughs> uh, <you've> <laughs> we, we were talking about house shows earlier so i've always like played bands that never played any gigs um but we did the one one of the few times that i ever did play in front of a crowd was at a house show and the issue was i think they had like four bands lined up to play and two of them didn't show up and so then we just had some time that needed to be filled and so i was friends with people that owned the house and we're running the show and we just made up a band on the spot and the goal was just everybody pick an instrument that you either don't know how to play or you're terrible at and just try not to sound together it was it was like an intentional just sound terrible um so that was one of the few performances of stale meth and (laughs) stale meth but I don't think anyone realized that it was intentionally bad. And then, like the rest of the night, I just kept getting made fun of for being a terrible drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Man, on purpose, you got to come on. It's uh, okay, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, and then another another fun story I, I like to tell, which it's fun, but I feel kind of bad about it. Was I was at a Mud Honey show, and uh, I was getting a little too into the show. And I, I kind of, you know, you do a little like fist pump thing, and I didn't realize how close the girl next to me was, and I just, I decked her in the face, um, <laughs> and I felt bad, and she handled it so well, that she leaned over and like grabbed me by the arm, and she's like, "Hey, I'm glad that you're having fun tonight, but if you hit me in the face again, I will fucking kill you." <laughs> and, <laughs> So I apologized and and went to the other side of the crowd and just tried to avoid avoid her. And I didn't know her. It's not like we went there together. Uh, and that's your wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I met your mother. Uh, but that's yeah. That's another another fun one that that people usually <laughs> hear. Um. So uh, you you never been in a band or anything like that, or? Well, I I've I've been in and. I've played with others. Um, we've had bands that never did anything, you know, never really had a show. Um, somewhere there's like recordings of a really bad rehearsal, but that's <laughs> yeah. No, I never, I never, we never really went anywhere with them. What'd you do besides drums? 
I, I play guitar. <laughs> guitar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was I was in like the first band that we did. Uh, I don't know. We only had like a handful of songs, like maybe six, and then I dropped out of it. And then they played a show, but they only had a couple songs. Like they'd forgotten the ones we wrote, I guess, except for one. And I was at the party, and so they brought me up to sing for that one song just because again it was like oh we didn't realize how much time needed to be filled um but that's kind of my extent of playing in front of people other than you know when you've just got like a jam night people just come over with their instruments hang out on the porch and play so who's your favorite guitarist oh shit um that's a that's a tough question (laughs) <laughs> if you want we can circle back to it <laughs> yeah we might we might have to like i don't know i want to i want to say like mick, mick uh mickey gigas because just because that's what i'm researching is cockney cockney rejects right now and he's <laughs> he's a phenomenal guitar player compared to like most most punk bands um but i don't know if i'd say he's my favorite or if oh, it's my mind right uh, because then they went from that like punk into doing like ACDC style kind of stuff, which still I like, but I think that I mean, gave that's him... rock and soul, rock and roll. Yes, yeah, me, man. Fuck it. Yeah. You know? But that, that gave him a chance to actually like show his, his skills more because then they could throw in more solos and things like that. I don't know. Right. I don't know favorite. Hey, so what do you think about festivals, you know, like the punk rock festivals and all that? I wish I could go to them. Uh, I I don't like where I'm at. They don't really come through very often. Um, and then again, it's it's scheduling with with family, making sure kids are taken care of, and all that. I think the last festival I went to, uh, like 2007, it was Warp Tour, um, yeah. which was cool. And there's some fun stories at that too. Like, you know, Monster was a sponsor. So it's like a hundred and I don't know, hundred five degrees outside, and they're giving out free energy drinks. So everybody's just slamming those. <laughs> we all run up. Cause I remember they had their booth right next to a stage, and they were giving out free energy drinks. So you got all these like dehydrated, sweaty kids run over and and get them. And then the band starts playing, and it was flogging Molly. So nobody wants to miss it, and they want to get in the pit. So they just chug these energy drinks, and then run into this sweaty pit where the temperature is even hotter because everybody's all pushed up against each other and then i don't know how many people threw up but it was enough that got me i was like i'm i'm not staying in this pit um (laughs) it's pretty gross and then i got i got a buddy who was at that festival and according to him i wasn't with him when this happened but he was getting high and somebody came by and this is before they they legalized it here and somebody came by and was like well you're not allowed to do that but let me take you backstage where you can and they brought him back there and basically just they're like all right instead of kicking you out you're gonna run food to the bands um so then they called me and told me where they were and i walked back and it was one of those issues of just like you know if you look like you belong then nobody questions it so i just walked past the security and they didn't stop me. And then the same thing happened to me. And he was like, all right, well, you're going to start um, running food to the bands and doing dishes. And then I don't know which member of Flogging Molly it was, but he came back and gave the dishwasher a break and started doing dishes. I thought that was pretty cool of him. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's real cool. So uh, what kind of venues you go around there where you live? Uh, Mostly just bars like i said i i don't know anyone who does house shows anymore it'd be kind of awkward for me to go to them because i know they're all kids who are like 10 20 years younger than me and i don't i don't want to be that guy um but can i <laughs> can i come into your basement and listen to the band with you guys so there there's a lot of bars um and there's always live music so it's just a matter of wherever you go um my dad does he's in a cover band so he's in a lot of bars and so i'll kind of find out he'll let me know you know this this band is going to be there this other night and so if i can i'll try to get to those but what's your favorite bar now 
That's a tough one. And what's your dad's cover? Yeah, band? that's what I was gonna ask. What's his cover band? Uh, they're they're called the Outtakes. So they do. Yeah, yeah. What's his cover band? They do like '90s, kind of, kind of whatever you would hear on on popular radio in the '90s. A lot of what what. Oh, they do. Okay. But it's it's fun. It was fun when I was a kid. He's been doing it since I was like ten. And uh, so he would take me to those shows, and I would Brody, and he'd give me twenty dollars at the end of the night, um, which was cool for me. And then now that I'm a parent, I was like, oh, that was just like so that he would be able to play those shows. Um, <laughs> he had to have me somewhere. Um, and then I I kept doing that in college because uh, I'd get a free meal usually. Um, <laughs> you know they. We're in a bar that's that also has a pizza joint attached to it. I'm like, sweet, free pizza. Um <laughs> you ever get to see bands that he played with like that you actually enjoyed? Yeah, no, he usually would it was he would be the only band playing. Oh that. Okay. but because of that I learned about different different venues. And you know, they'll have like a flyer up that'll show what bands are coming through town. Um so I I can find out from that. Um as far as favorite venue, I think I've only been to it a few times, but it's just, it's a good spot. Uh, there's this place called Grinders, and it's just because they have a big open outdoor area. You can fit a lot of people in there. I've seen, let's see, I saw Gogol Bordello there, and I don't remember who opened for them, but then I saw Dropkick Murphys and Rancid when they came through a couple years ago there. Um, but they have, they have a lot of good, good shows just cause they've got such a huge stage and it's just like a big open lot. Uh, right. cracked my phone in the urinal there. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, cause it's like, you know, once it gets dark, there's no lights in those things and you, you don't know, you know, what drunk assholes just pissed and shit all over everything. So then you, you want your flashlight, but I got to go. So I tried to hold it in my mouth, my phone. And I bit down too hard, and I cracked the screen on it. Um, so that was a souvenir, I guess. The broken phone. Nice. Yeah. We're just under the ten minute mark. We're getting the warning now. <laughs> so you're out near like Kansas City. Yeah. See, Google's wonderful. I just. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was like, "How much information before I'm I'm found?" Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Kansas City. So, know where uh, Cocknoes is from, or are they from the other Kansas City? I have no idea. Right? They could be from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but I mean, that's all. It's all the same city. We're just crossing the border. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri, and it's it's just because the city's grown across state lines. But it hey, is. If you could bring back any punk rocker, who would it be? Oh shit. Um <laughs> Well, here's another one for you. Tough one. Is punk rock dead? No. No, I don't. I've never thought that. Um, I made the mistake in another interview of suggesting that grunge was dead, and I kind of got put in my place on that one. But <laughs> <laughs> it was it was kind of that same. Like if you if you want to say like new wave is dead, or it's like yeah, it just sort of changed names. Um, but I don't know. I think I think punk rock's such like a vague, open genre that you know it's just it has so much room to to evolve. Because like like we said, you know, you can't. It's not really fair to compare, like Devo, to the Misfits, um, but they both fall under that same umbrella. That's what I say too. Yeah. But I, and I think that's kind of fun because then you never get tired of the genre. And I mean, that's the thing with grunge. I always thought that was kind of just a punk, another level of punk rock too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Especially when you put bands like the Dwarves or something into it, you know, like, oh, well, that's kind of punk rock, you know. Okay. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. It is nice being that old and having your own thing, you know, your own breakthrough genre of music, you know. So that's what, like, emo. I was like, well, all that is is some of it's pop and some of it's fucking punk. And, you know, it's just, it's all, 
Miss yeah. Matchy just got your own thing, you know. I tried to introduce my kids to My Chemical Romance the other day, and they weren't having it. <laughs> like, what is this? Put something else on. Uh, which is weird because they love the bad brains. Not to say that those two sound the same, but like I just think it's weird that they would be so put off by one. But they, I think they just love the speed of bad brains and um, yeah, H- HR's voice. My my oldest son thinks it's funny because <laughs> I don't know because it's like higher pitch and just fast. But yeah, he kind of has it. He does a little voice, you know. It's, yeah. it's not I, like I, a regular it's screaming voice. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I think I think Bad Brains is always been <laughs> one of my favorite bands. Um, hey, so we mentioned your favorite. Club. My favorite what? Right. So we mentioned your favorite guitar player. Uh, yeah. You got a favorite drummer or a favorite bass player? Uh, favorite singer? So drummer, I think I, I've got a lot of respect for... Um, shit, now I can't think of his name. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough respect. Uh, no effects is drummer. He's. I feel like he has a lot more talent than people give him credit for. Um. As far as bass player, oh, and then Rat Scabies, he's he's got he's he's earned his place in history. Um, but bass Great player, drummer. I don't know about bass player. No Captain Sensible. <laughs> I mean, he's he's talented, but he just kind of annoys me sometimes. I'm sure he annoys everyone around him. It seems like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is kind of, it's like Fat Mike, like. I bet he's I bet he's a a cool dude and I like his music, but I don't know if I would ever want to hang out with him. Seems a little too obnoxious for me. So you mentioned uh, <laughs> Salt Lake City Punk, or yeah, would that be a favorite punk movie? Or I don't know if I. It's definitely one that that kind of set me on my course. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to pick favorite punk movie, it's Suburbia, though. That's. Yeah. That was that was one where like when I saw it, I was like, whoa, yeah, that's this is completely different. Um You're talking about the original, it, right? What's that? You're talking about the original suburbia, right? Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. the nineties the one. Um, right. I don't I don't know much well, about it. I know there's a nineties one. Yeah, I know it exists and I think it has Steve Zahn in it. But yeah. I haven't seen yeah, it. Like, uh, that was a good Rubens. soundtrack as well. Yeah. But but the original one, yeah, and that's it's got flea in it. Um, Happy Easter, asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I quote. Have you ever seen a movie called Dudes? I just learned. I just heard about that one on um, what is it? Uh, turned out a punk. That that podcast. Oh, okay. He he was talking about it with somebody else, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. My daughter likes uh Joan Jess, so I watched uh, Light of Day with her yesterday. Joan Jett was uh, my my celebrity crush for for a good long while. Yeah. <laughs> but have you seen that movie? That's pretty good. Uh-uh, it wasn't she? It's not a punk movie. It was her and Michael J. Fox. That's pretty good. It's uh, it's not a combo I'd expect to see, but no, but it, it works. I like it. I'll watch They're it. in a band. They're brother and sister in a band. Mm. Pretty good. My wife liked it, so <laughs> yeah. We had three minutes. Uh, anything you want to add before we get cut off? Anything uh, you want to plug? Yeah, plug your uh, podcast on Podbean. Uh, it's on, let's see, I'm on Red Circle. Because when I set it all up, that was one that was free. Um, I, try, I tried to do it as cheap as I could. Uh, but yeah, podcast is Let's Talk Punk Rock. Uh, I have a website for it, which is just letstalkpunk.com. Uh, Cause somebody out there apparently has let's talk punk rock.com. They already, I mean, it's not a website, but they own it. So I couldn't use that. Okay. Um, but then pretty much anything else that's related to, to the show is on that website. Okay. okay. So uh, we do a beer testing. Do you drink it all? I do a little bit. Not, not so as much as I used to You drink beer. Yeah. What's your favorite beer? See, I'm I'm a fan of of porters, uh, porters and stouts. So I think 
for a favorite, I, I go with just the classic Guinness. Right on. So uh, did we ask you your favorite band, your favorite punk band? I, don't know, I, know, I, I mentioned Bad Brains, um, and I think they do they do hold as, as my favorite. They're one I never get tired of. Definitely one of my favorites, too. Can you believe it? This piece of garbage over here sitting next to me, uh, this tuna fucking for sushi, he don't even like them. How? Don't even like them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because one time I said they're overrated. Uh, what the fuck? You, you're out of your mind. <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. Hey, how do you know? <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like them. I just said they're overrated. <laughs> like, what oh. the fuck, man? Hey, did you ever tell us who you want to bring back? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> um. And I, I still, I still blank because I'm trying to think of ones, and I'm like, did they die or not, or did they just? Kind of... <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I'll go with with, with the easy choice. Uh, Joey Ramon would be Joey Ramon. There you go. Good choice. So, do you do all the artwork for your uh, logos and all that? No, I'm not talented at all in that way. Um. <laughs> No, my my buddy, my does buddy Greg, Granddaddy Long Greg is what, what we call him. He he does all the artwork for it. Okay. Does all anybody right, else help you out with anything? Not really. Uh, like I said, my wife built the sound booth for me. Oh, cool. nice. But no, every everything else is is pretty much me on my own, which is, again is why it takes so long for me to get the episodes out. Um, well, we're gonna get cut off, so I wanted to thank okay. you for joining us. Yeah, no, thank you. This is this has been fun. Appreciate and it. Everybody like check know. out. Everybody check out the podcast. Let's talk punk rock. Mm-hmm. It should be out very shortly. We'll yeah, out one ahead yeah. of you, and then you'll be the next one. So probably about two weeks. Cool. If I get off my ass and mix it down. Yeah, let me <laughs> let me know, and then I'll I'll make sure to to put it out there as well. Okay. So.
Hola, me llamo Delia Cruz y yo oigo Radio KMEX, Santa Ana, California. Oh, things can't get much worse for me. Sometimes I'd rather die. There's a fire in my culo and a teardrop in my eye. It was a caliente, chili, fede, that night it didn't seem. That today I had a fiery ring that made me wanna scream. Cut the stains, fiends kill, fast Chevys, team thrills, rich hookahs, fine wine. I love my kids, I love control, I fuck up it's a Amigo!
soldier rides on.